points and a relatively low attack power just to give our runners a chance. And here we go, the race has started. Let's see what those church chests are, as the usual king just gives the opening speech. Stones of Sunlight, already we've got one of the three items we need, Fighter's Ring, and the third one is Gold. Now, the other thing is, you may notice we don't have any keys yet. That's okay, we don't need keys in this particular flag set. Also, Charlock has been uh, redecorated. We, we only have one level of the, the Dragon Lord's dungeon, you just get dropped off at the bottom floor. So now everyone is going to be going into the armory, Finding some gold, finding some dragon scale, that's nice. Gold, and more gold. So you definitely have a gold grind potential set up. Um, one of the interesting things about this game, uh, if you're not familiar with it, there's a little glitch. You see, this is back on the NES, they didn't have a lot of room for memory. So the game can only remember the first eight chests that you've taken. After that, it kind of forgets you've taken the chest and lets you take it over and over again, hence Gold Grind. Uh, looks like Firon Burgundy is going to be heading out into the basement cellar of Tandigel Castle to see what's down here. And it is the Jerk... No, Staff Cave. My apologies. Staff Cave. Um, that's where you would go to turn the harp into being the staff. Firon, finding a wolf and going away. Well, there's a cave northeast of Tantajo, and that is... let's see... Well, I believe that might be South Swamp by the looks of Fighty's movement. Ooh, Joel breathes fire. For those that have him, get out your Droll Lord emotes. Yeah, that might have been Garen's Grave, I think. Ah, okay, it is Baby Breath, not Dragon Lord Breath, but still, that's uh, definitely gonna send them back home. And uh, the look at those stats, those stats are, you have three minimum stats there, Strength, Agility, and AP. Uh, and they don't have any fairy water or torches. That's another thing that's new on this scene, uh, or new to this tournament anyway, is that torches and fairy water can be used as items in combat to do damage. Unfortunately, they don't have any. And it looks like the wizard's the only one that's like the weakest right now, doing three damage for each attack. Make it got three to four. Yeah, this could be a bloody, brutal start to this seed. Uh, with so low hit point, only ten hit points, even if you find that wet noodle and it's only doing three or four damage a hit, that's still only three rounds. Werewolves have baby breath as well. Not that it's entirely needed at this particular hit point total, but, you know. I'm just glad we're just watching this, because oh, luckily I'm not participating in this scene. Druin Lord does have the, fire, the, the Dragon Lord 2's fire breath, though. Sounds like the wolves and the druid lords are going to be the ones to avoid for this sea for now. Yep, and of course, you know, each of these uh, the, the, these uh, runners here look like they're a little bit different characters than usual. This is not Eredric's descendant that's running. We've got one that is Elena from Dragon Quest uh, 4. You've got Link from the Zelda series. In fact, I think that's the same icon from uh, Zelda 1, the original. And Firon Burgundy, I believe, is actually using the Gwendolyn sprite, which means if he has to rescue the princess, we're gonna see an interesting scenario. 
Do you mean rescuing the prince? Ah, yes, rescuing the prince in that case. And speaking of towns, uh, hello, Breconary. And we've got a very expensive copper shield, but full plate's only 125. The silver shield is also very inexpensive. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be some very hefty defense boosts. Well, at least they have a shot at that wet noodle uh, wizard that's lurking about. They're trying to get some more searching done. Of course, we are in Burgundy picking up some very valuable herbs. I wonder if he's going to pick up any fairy water while he's there, because that would definitely be a way to get him some damage output. Well, he's buying those torches right now as we speak, so torches are not that bad, but I prefer the fairy water because that does more damage than the torch. It does the same damage as our Hurt spell does, only it bypasses Hurt spell resistances. Uh, normally, the exception to that would be Metal Slimes, for whom it's still going to be a coin flip. However, you know, everything is randomized anyway, so that's probably not going to be the case this season. Ooh, Fryteeth trying on another wizard and getting taken down for his problem. So now Fearon is geared up and ready to go. Uh, he is actually in a position to finally break this horrendously painful stalemate he's got going on. Defeated the Poltergeist, 157 experience! Ding level, 20 power, 10 speed, 18 hit points, and a bunch of magic. That was two levels. No, th four levels he gained in one shot. And the spell of... Outside? Yeah, it seems like he only has outside right now, but... I say, uh... Taking on enemies is not a problem anymore right now. Well, the Warlock still sent him back home. Looks like Angel FM has found Breconary buying that silver shield for only 229. Did not get a chance to buy the magic armor for 72, which isn't much of a discount, but did pick up the full plate for 125. Uh, yes, uh, question from the chat. Uh, very fast XP does affect things since the Chaos Randomizer includes how much experience is needed for the next level. It takes what would have normally been randomized and cuts that in half. Meanwhile, Furon, Furon just got another level, and I don't know what spell he got. Do you catch the drip on it, Sneaky? I didn't catch which one it was. Oh, I just read it. It's hurt. Hurt more. No, actually, regular hurt, not hurt more. Well, he also has hurt more now, and that's the big thing. Now he has an effective, consistent, reliable weapon to use other than just his fairy water. Yeah, hurt Ooh. was at six, more was at seven. Speaking of dodges, uh, Warlock is not taking the hurt more at all.
Euron's just throwing Hail Marys left and right with just torches, but the Warlock's about to outdo him. And it was not worth going after the Warlock. Yeah, e even with a few levels under their belts, um, this is just a very brutal start to this particular run. Uh, they do have that Stones of Sunlight, so they've got one of the critical items that they need to progress in their quest, but there's just a whole lot of pain right now. Oh, but that Dream Lord is worth 154 experience points for uh, Age of FM. Yeah, assuming you don't get hit by the DL2 breath, absolutely. Well, Angel FM just reached a level 9 in the flash, so... Well, this race is going to become interesting, but this seed is brutal as we speak because of DL2 breath roaming around. Ooh, Star Wyvern just doing a flat base 41 damage in a single hit, sending Angel FM back. Those jerk birds are gonna be jerks. So, uh, question in the chat, the numbers, the bigger number beside the runner's names on the tracker is their current standing, and the smaller number by their death counter is the total number of points they have accumulated so far in the tournament. So, Angel FM won first place in week one and has five points. Fry Teeth has three points because he won second place in his running, as does Fear and Burgundy. Meanwhile, I just saw Angel FM just went to a Storm of Sunlight Cave. Yeah, I mean, you do have Breconary not too far away, and they've definitely left the torch out for you at the, uh, the, the Six Gold Inn. Especially with the, um, the little, little shopping center next to it with the amazing prices on some armor and, of course, the, uh, the fairy water available as well, which turned out to be quite useful to break the initial blockage. Level 10 for Angel FM and 11 for Firon. Even the regular Druin has baby breath already, too. Fry Teeth finally making his way into Breconary, making his purchases. Little bit behind the other two, but remember, this is chaos. Anything can still happen at any time, and we haven't seen what that Dragon Lord can do yet. Oof, and Angel just got sent back by the knight. With hurt more. Now, there are a couple of caveats when it comes to the Dragon Lord as far as the randomizer goes. Uh, phase 1, anything goes. He can hit you for uh, 101, which I believe we saw a few days ago. Uh, personal best for the Dragon Lord as far as I can tell. Uh, or he can just hit like a wet noodle. You never really know. You never know what he's going to have his uh, uh, abilities either. But Phase 2 is a little more constrained. Normally, in the randomizer tournament, he'd have between 150 and 165 hit points. Uh, however, in Chaos, he will have anywhere from 100 to 230 hit points. Plus, he has the option of having either sleep or heal. Which is you hope for is just heal, not the sleep. 
He doesn't have to have either one, but they are both on the option to be randomized. Ooh, Star Wyverns with sleep as well as that big attack damage. Yeah, Jerkbird's gonna jerk. So, uh, the other problem with the Dragon Lord Phase 2 is that his uh, stop spell resistance is also randomized. So, it could have a r resistance of, say, 3 out of 16, or it could have a resistance of, say, 14 out of 16. You never know. Fry Teeth doing some grinding on these wizards to be able to try and get some experience under his belt. He's only level 3 and he has to be feeling like he knows that he's behind the other two as soon as he walked into Breconary. Uh, Droll Magi with Hurt more taking on Fear on. Those Drolls are being really painful this seed. Yeah, and if you notice by level 11, you do get the other two spells, but that means Radiant still needs to be a uh, grab in their level grinding. Brighty taking an intentional death warp to be able to restore his hit points and magic. Well, I can't blame him for that one. Star Wyverns also have Dragon Lord 2 Breath in addition to sleep, so they do have the full wombo combo and hit like a golem. So, Star Wyverns definitely probably the functional equivalent of the fun police this seed. So, should we call them the Star Police then? Now, boy, I said, boy, you wanna listen here? I got me a silver star on my belt. Oh, but those dragons give a ton of experience, so 166 per kill. That's gonna be real useful. And these poltergeists also give over 150 experience and are very easy to take down. So, those are two definitely grindable enemies to be able to get some levels. Uh, Fearon looks like he's doing a bit of grinding as well. Looks like all of our, our runners right now are doing a little bit of a grind because they're having some trouble getting through that swamp to be able to really get out and explore the world. Angel FM has gotten on the other side of that swamp, has found a new cave. We'll see what's down there. Yeah, at this point, all of our runners have the silver shield and full plate, and we know that the magic armor is over 7,000 gold like usual. So, unless we find a really good weapon, I don't really see gold being that valuable to our runners. They're mostly looking for experience at this point. Well, meanwhile, Angel FM d decided not to go inside a new cave, so he's probably potentially asking for more monsters? Well, he's got to be a little bit concerned. Remember, we still haven't seen Tablet Cave, and if you get lost in Tablet Cave, you can't Death Warp out because there are no monsters. So, unless you're really confident with your bonking skills, and not really a place to go, or it could just be they're, they're looking for the next town, see if they can't get a weapon. Star Wyvern with the preemptive strike and the DL2 breath, putting an end to Angel's exploration. Fearon, on the other hand, has taken the philosophy, when in doubt, grind it out, has hit level 14, has Radiant, and there is Garen's grave. Let's see what those five churches are locking up for to be. be an herb, a wings, and 
a cursed belt in the first three chests. Angel FM getting sent back home once again by the Star Police. Well, the birds are being mega jerks for this seed, so when in doubt, try to run. Yeah, but they've got an obnoxious habit of getting preemptive strikes. It leads me to believe their agility is probably pretty beefy. Well, I just saw what little scorpions give out after you kill them. 228 experience points. Very nice. Metal Slimes hitting for 36. They've definitely been hitting the workbench. Uh, one thing to be worried about is that even at level 14, the hit point totals are really not favorable. Yeah, I've never seen HP this bad in the gift from the Gecko and Adios, Spiron, back to the castle you go. Still has not seen the last two chests in Garen's grave yet. And while everybody is grinding like this, let's go ahead and ask everyone if you like this content, please follow our runners, Angel FM, Fry Teeth, Fear on Burgundy. And of course, I am Sneaky the Lost. With me in the commentators booth is Kaitan. Uh, then, of course, Centroid and Cyberdark on the uh, trackers, and Math Girl on the restreams. Yeah, max HP of 48 at level 14 is not what you want to see. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, you're expecting to be like, what, near triple digit by the time you hit level 15 or 16? But it seems to be... Oh, by the way, uh, I believe Fearon just got to level 15? If I'm not mistaken? Uh, Fearon is still 14, Angel FM is at 13, and uh, Fry Teeth is at level 9. There's about a 2,000 experience gap between Fearon and Fry. And I believe Fearon's about to go back to the grave if this slime doesn't become a jerk next. And it looks like Angel FM has found the city of Hawk's Nest and is going to check out that trap tile. Meanwhile, Fearon has found the Freebie Cave, where the Fairy Flute resides. Drakema is sitting on the trap tile in Hawk's Nest, is hitting pretty decently. And sends Angel FM back home without letting them know what's under there. Murder Bats. Seems like the Drakeem has been hitting the gym as well. Fearon Burgundine has now found Hawksness. And yeah, the Draker is giving out a very meager amount. I got bad feeling that fear might be sent back from the Drakima. Yeah, unfortunately, he can't guarantee being able to survive two hits from this Drakima. That's gonna be a problem. Unfortunately, I don't think our runners really have the hit points to take on that Drakema right now, unless they get real lucky. Like Fry Teeth just did, 94 experience, but man, that's a painful way to get it. But is the item worth it? That's the question. Find out here in a second, and it is Edric's token. So they will need to take that murder bat on at some point. Oh, and then Star Wavern with the back attack sleep 
and the DL2 breath, sending Fry Teeth back home. But at least he figured out what was on that tile first. Angel FM taking his next crack at this Drakeema. And has gotten it, and Angel FM will be able to pick up his token. Well, speaking of Mel Scorpions, uh, here's, uh, Rocky's chance to catch up an experience. If he can land a blow, this thing's dodging. Right, he's found a blue dragon, but it's only hitting for two points of damage. Uh, definitely got hit with a nerf bat at some point. Oh, Viron Burgundy has found Remuldar, being able to pick up one chest in here, and be able to also check the equipment shop, see if he can find a decent weapon. And that chest is just pure gold. And to answer the question, yeah, next week, there's going to be a different set of flags, and there will be no hurt more next week, so that'll be interesting. Ooh, Flame Sword on the cheap. Only 35 gold for the Flame Sword, the best weapon in the game. Well, sign me up for that Flame Sword. I'm not going to refuse a huge amount of damage with my hands. Well, the best weapon that money can buy. You know, some things you can't buy with money. And not just love. Ooh, Wolf Lord's not even worth it either for experience. Bright Teeth trying to catch up from his XP deficit. Mira, meanwhile, Firon Burgundy continuing to explore. Angel FM getting sent back home. And Spectres are no bueno for experience points. Only giving out freaking low 9, nine XP. Fry Teeth has found the freebie cave and will pick up his fairy flute. Fear on Gee, finding well, another well. town. Along with that, another cave next to it. Garen! Garenham! Alright, there's another three chests in the back there. He's gonna stay at the inn first. We'll see what's back there. And of course, there's also a cave of something back there. We haven't seen uh, a couple of things yet. We have seen Staff Cave, we haven't seen Jerk Cave, and we haven't seen Mountain Cave or a couple of others yet. Oh, Erdrick's armor in the back of Garenham! Well, hello, no more swamp issues or barrier tile. You can just walk through and heal. Definitely, by far, the best armor in the game. Not only does it have the... Ooh, hey, Swamp North in the back of Garenham. But yeah, that armor is pretty sweet. In addition to making being the best armor defensively in the game, it reduces the amount of damage you take from Hurtmore, from Dragon Breath, including the Dragon Lord's Breath. And also, um, not only do you not take damage from Swamps and Barrier Tiles, but you heal one hit point per step you take. Power by 2, response speed 1, hit points only by 5, magic by 14. We've got a good magic point total, but our hit point gains are still subpar. Yeah, with a maximum 53 HP, it's impossible, and the Guardian Tile is the Magician. 
with hurt more. Fortunately, he did pick up that uh, armor first, so it's not gonna hurt quite as bad. Did land that stop spell. So this, uh, unless he's got another trick up his sleeve, this is probably gonna be it for this magician. Oh, but the magician hits hard though, but that doesn't matter, but meager experience points, but another level up to level 16, we got 16, 4, 3, HP, and zero HP, as empty I would say, I love it! Oh, zero MP, my apologies. Looks like Firon is going to be rescuing the princess today, even though he hasn't seen the where the coordinates are in Cantlin. I'm assuming that's to be able to keep track of how much XP he's going to need for his next level to be able to optimize his grinding experience a bit, since he's level 16 and still has nowhere close to the amount of hit points he's going to want walking into Charlock. Sounds to me like we might have to go to level 20 and above to get our so-called uh, HP of gold. Uh, yeah, and apologies, it's Furon, not Fearon. My apologies. Yeah, even without the randomized stats for the Dragon Lord, you usually want at least a hundred hit points to be able to take on the Dragon Lord. With the fact that he can be even nastier now, you probably want more than that. So, definitely gonna be a grind here in a bit. Furon managing to get away from the jerk bird. Angel FM running into Remuel Dar, and will be able to pick up the flame sword himself. Well, meanwhile, uh, Frighteeth and Garingham about to pick up his legendary Edric's armor sooner or later. Frighteeth in Garingham is gonna pick up his armor. Meanwhile, I see Furon found a uh, big Charlock. And another Star Wyvern. Problem is, he doesn't have the token yet because he hasn't found Hawksness and nobody has found the harp yet. I'm gonna take a bold guess that the harp might be either the coordinates or it could be lurking around in Mountain Cave. Oh, oh, as a correction, Fraun did make it into Hawksness. It's just that the the murder bat um, put an end to his attempt to get it. But it looks like he's gonna try again, assuming the Star Wyvern lets him, and it doesn't look good. Oh, got away with eight hit points. He's still in this. Excellent move! 135 damage, one shots at Drakema. Payback is so good. And a level. There's your hit points! 36 hit points! We finally found Leg Day and picked up his token. Wait, did he pick up his token? I believe so he did, because otherwise. Huh. Still not where you want to be, but at least it's no longer one-shot Charlie. Maximum HP is still not good enough right now, since we're on to 92 HP maximum right now. 
Brighty dying to a Spectre with a Wombo combo, Sleep and Dragon Lord 2 Breath. So we have Star Rider and now the Spectre's not to worry about as well. Okay, we have it confirmed by the replay. Uh, reviewing the footage, Ferran did in fact collect his token first down. Now the question is, is the harp going to be the coordinates? Because if I'm not mistaken, we got the fairy food from the free cave earlier, so... It's looking like coordinates, unless it's not necessary anymore. Well, it could still be in Mountain Cave. And don't forget, we haven't gotten the Legendary Sword either. True, true. So, hopeth that that freaking sword is not coordinates. Rogue Scorpions are not looking too dangerous immediately. Angel FM finding the town of Garenham will also get that armor upgrade here in a bit. Restocking on herbs and will probably spend the night at the end as well. Piron leveling up to level 17 and now... Wait a Fry minute. Frighty just found Mountain Cave. Ooh. This could actually be an opportunity for Frighteeth to kind of pull it inside straight here. He's been a little bit behind this whole seed because he because of his experience gap. But if he can find the heart first, he could actually be in an interesting position. First treasure chest is the wing, so for a lot more chests to go anyways, because Mount Gabe is just, you know. Rebound city, with, but still gaining counters. Managed to get away from that jerk bird. Uh, Cursed Belt. And Silver Harp! Frighteeth has the Silver Harp! If no one else finds that, Frighteeth has a chance to catch up and actually pull in the lead here. Meanwhile, Angel FM going down Swamp Cave to Swamp South and checking out the second continent. Oh, Furon you know heading back into Garen's grave to get those last two chests in the bottom. We know it's not going to be the heart, but it could still be something interesting like, say, the sword. Well, here's the thing, though. Sword could be not the coordinates because there is always uh, one possible possible Sherlock dive, which could be in the pyramid or in everyone's hopefully truly favorite place, Judge's Table. And Firon Burgundy running into another one of these jerk birds. Fortunately, he's got the stats and the armor now to be able to actually take a dragon's breath and not immediately die. Manages to get away from it. I don't think we've seen Cole either, have we? No, Cole's still in play. Cole? It doesn't exist. It's just a myth. Angel FM having found Tablet Cave. We're about to find out what's inside Tablet Cave. Just a torch. Absolute sadness. Firon finding Mountain Cave and also finding the harp. But, uh, alas, he got wrecked by the Star Police. Now, he knows where the Staff Cave is. I don't know if we've seen Jerk Cave yet. You know what? Chat has brought up a very good point. Uh, 
Look at the attack power from Burgundy right now. I don't think the Edric Sword might not be necessary anymore. Necessary? No. But an extra 10 attack power is still an extra 5 to 2 to 3 damage per hit. That's never a bad thing. I just wonder how far off the experience is for uh, Thrawn to get to level 18 right now. Well, that's one of the reasons he probably rescued the princess was to get that kind of information if he gets curious. Fry Teeth making his way into Garen Hammond will get his Aerodrake's armor. Angel FM getting level 15, not too far behind Furon. Teeth looks like he's gonna go rescue the princess as well. Meanwhile, Angel just got to level 16. Right Heath has found, uh, looks like, the uh, mountain cave, so we'll also be... No, excuse me. That's uh, Swamp South he's coming out of. And there's Big C right outside of Swamp South, which actually makes Big C a potential grind point as well, since the Swamp North is Garenham. That's true, because it's not that far from the inn anyways. Yeah, you just go into the swamp south outside and you're in front of Garenham. Angel FM in uh, picking up a few chests here in Mountain Cave. It is going to find the harp here in a second. Meanwhile, Frighty is looking at northeast of uh, Charlock right now to see what's Ooh. out here. Furon, Furon Burgundy has found the jerk, has gotten the rainbow drop, and is probably going to be the first one in Charlock. Right, he's about to get near uh, your cave as well, or am I way off? Jerk cave, I think, was on the other continent, kind of a ways off. It's on the other side of Charlock, I think. Coal has not been found yet either, correct. However, that might be it on for, uh, no, excuse me, that's gonna be Remingle Dog. No, Garenham, excuse me. Oh, Jerk Cave was way west of Garenham, excuse me. Nobody's actually gone past Garenham because they've all gone to the second continent at that point. Except, of course, Furon. Four 
45 minutes in, and we've got our first runner that is going to make their first dive into Charlock. Oh, pardon! Looks like Cole has been found by Angel and the Big Stick is there. Will that make a difference? That's gonna be interesting to see. That could actually, I mean, that, it, yeah, you're looking only 10 AP, and with the way it's calculated, it's only either 2 or 3 minimum and 5 maximum damage, but that could be the difference between blowing through heal spells and going back home, so that could be a telling difference. Well, here comes the rainbow drop, and... Shog is open for business for Thrawn. Oh, excuse me, it's uh, 12 AP over the Flame Sword. My apologies. So that's going to be anywhere from 6 to 3 damage extra. Thrawn getting the bad news that it is not going to be on the Pyramid today. Big Stick was in cold. Obviously, with 92 HP, you're probably not going to want to actually seriously take on the Dragon Lord, but I could see him at least engaging the Dragon Lord so that he knows what kind of fight he's in for, what kind of abilities the Dragon Lord has, how hard he's hitting, that sort of thing. So I could definitely see that just as a, an intentional death warp and uh, information. Well, well, don't forget, the Guardian for Dragon Lord still could be a potential grind as well. Absolutely true, and being so close to Garenem uh, is definitely going to be a pretty interesting option here. And Angel just found the Jerk Cave. But these green dragons with Dragonlord 2 breath with the Wombo combo as well, so... Ooh, this is dicey for Thrawn. Man, he's just gonna continue sleeping, and it just takes him down. He just could not wake back up. Somebody making the obligatory Trogdor reference in chat. I don't want to blast out anybody's eardrums by attempting it. But you know what? I, I, I now I, I could be totally off base on this, but somehow I don't think any of our runners are gonna actually use the death necklace if they find it. It's just a hunch. I don't think we're gonna see the death necklace in play at all because a we haven't seen the coordinates yet, which is a possibility that could be the issue. Because B, we already saw what Sherlock has, and there's no death necklace in there. So, I'm thinking it may well be. Yeah, it may well be on coordinates, in which case, good luck. And of course, C, I won't waste my time with the coordinates right now, especially. But Angel FM is gonna rescue the princess right now. Well, you know, Elena's got a habit of rescuing princesses, even ones that are trying to impersonate her at the time. I just hope Angel FM realizes that Three's Company is next week, not this week. 
No, excuse me, two weeks from now. Next week is Cursed Princess. Yeah, Cursed Princess is gonna be fun. Especially with an open Charlock. I'm still good at Cursed Princess. My personal best right now is like sub 35. For on now grinding here, ran into a droll magi with hurt more. And he's uh, he's he's surviving like a champ. And only 17 experience points. Welcome to chaos. Welcome to ultimate sadness. Angel FM's on Dragon Lord. Let's see what Dragon Lord has. Or to quote a rather popular character, Chaos. Well, let's see what Dragon Lord 2 is really up to this for this scene, because Angel FM's taking it on right now. The Lord Breath has expected. Well, first attack from Angel was 16, so that's not bad for a damage roll. No way he could possibly do this. Uh, I, it, it, it's theoretical. We'll see what kind of abilities the Dragon Lord has. Well, I did see a 21 damage in that one damage roll from Angel. Well, that'll happen with an attack power of 152. 24 added more. It's looking good for Angel. Remember, he could have anywhere from 100 to 230 hit points, and we haven't seen any skills yet, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have a heal somewhere. So far, just breath and attack. I don't see any spells coming out. We will see. This this could be. Could a miracle happen? Dragon Lord is being very generous with the physical attacks, giving Angel a chance to do some doubles here. Yeah, but Angel's like about to run out of heal more. I believe he only has like three left. Some risky plays in attacking on a 48, but it paid off. There you go! Get out your GG's! Angel FM has defeated the Dragon Lord and will go home to slide into first place. That RNG of Angel is ridiculously good for this fight. And I'll call it right now, Angel with the official SRL time of 53 minutes and 20 seconds. GG. who's gonna win second place is equally important. Remember, we're looking at points here, and we've got five weeks before we actually get to the playoffs where the points actually matter, so uh, getting second place is still worth three points, third place is worth two points, so that one point could make a lot of difference in the long run. That is true, because we have no idea who could be in the playoffs after possibly maybe after week four, if I'm not mistaken, before week five that could determine Week everything. five. Yeah. Week five is the final week before we get our own March Madness, break out the brackets, and we'll have the top 16 battle it out.
Her on Burgundy, finding the big stick in coal. And I think, I think Furon is going to want to make another attempt here pretty soon. Although he's got to be worried about that HP total. He could end up grinding at least one or two more levels. Well, unless he has that, that luck of Angel, that could be also a possibility. Oh, he's in. So he's going to make this next attempt. Also, uh, Frighty's skin is, uh, Edric's sword, so everyone has the sword! Yeah, but Frighty's is only level 16 with only 56 hit points. He's going to need at least one more level. And here's Furon with his first attempt at the Dragon Lord. Well, speaking of Angel, GG. Sorry, can't hear you, Angel. Oh, maybe if I get off mute, it'll work. Yeah, just maybe. So, thoughts? Uh, I don't know why I just. You know, I deserve to be punished with this low HP, uh, racist. That I have to say one thing, Angel. Did you sold your soul to someone? Uh, <laughs> I feel like it. But, I mean, we had a we had a huge amount of attack power, and... I mean, there's no reason not to try. I mean, if nothing else, you have been able to determine exactly what skills, if any, the Dragon Lord has. As it turns out, didn't have any. But even knowing if he's got a sleep or a heal in the back pocket is very valuable information. Yeah, that was more what I was doing in the first place, was just seeing, okay, what skills maybe does it have? And then when, it's th when DL1 stays asleep for the whole time, I'm like, well, why not take a chance? I have a hard point too. Yeah, unfortunately, Furon spent a couple of turns trying to land sleep or stop spells preemptively unsuccessfully. So he's at a, about a two heal more deficit right now. Yeah, I'm I'm not the biggest fan of trying to land the preemptive stop spell until I actually find out what it has. Yeah, it seems like there's uh, there's two schools of thought on that, at least in Chaos. The one being, if he's got sleep, I want to try and get the stop spell in first. And the other one being, well, if he doesn't have sleep, uh, then there's no point wasting my time and my magic. Yeah, and that's pretty much the that's just my thought process in it. Especially with, I'm already at 92, I mean, if I get slept and wrecked, it happens. But man, those Star Wyverns, tell me about them. Uh, I don't think there are enough words to describe how much I hate them. <laughs> I could sleep, has, has Wombo, hits for, hits for 30s, and like, so many times I tried to get to, uh, to Rimbledar so many times, and <laughs> every time it was one of them that stopped me. And Fearon walking away with second place in this fight with an official SRL time of 58 minutes. Uh, what, 40 seconds? 43 seconds, but. 43. So, about five minutes difference between first and second place. Not bad. So right now, Frighty's the only one that's racing against the clock right now. Yeah, but man, that that early start was just brutal. The Drolls, the Droll Lords, the Druin Lords. The I mean, there were there were there were there was pain around every corner, and those stats you started off with. Yeah, that... they were not the greatest. And of I course, will... Go ahead. 
And I was going to say, of course, there was also no handy torches or fairy water in uh, the, the armory either. Yeah, but unfortunately, Breconary is just north, and L luckily I killed a... I think I killed a poltergeist before I had to go do it. And of course, one of the big advantages of Breconary in this particular seed is they do indeed sell fairy water, which uh, was really useful in continuing on. Yeah, and also that cheap armory was like that's the selling point of everything that there was need. Yeah, full plate and a silver shield for less than 500, I'll take that. And speaking of Sherlock, uh, Frighty's about to drop that rainbow drop right now and going in. Can Frighty do it on his first attempt? Unless this sleeping combo of the green dragons get in his way. You know, I'm surprised nobody actually tried to repel their way through Charlock. Actually, Ferran did, actually. Ah, Ferran did, okay. I did too. Well, I gotta admit, the map was not that bad for the seed. Except for that green dragon, though. But yeah, those those star wyverns were definitely the fun police of this scene. They were the fun police. They were the sheriff's badge. They they had the captain's hat on. They they had all of the law enforcement in, rolled into one. Hello there, Furon. Uh, what are what are your opinions on this bloody brutal entry to this seed and going on? Well, let's see. Ones that won't get me kicked off of Randomania. Uh, let's see. <laughs> let's see here. Uh, where to start? Um, I mean, it seemed pretty linear at the beginning. It wasn't too terrible with that. I mean, running into the Star Wyverns on a couple of occasions wasn't exactly fun, but. Uh, I thought I did a decent job of finding everything. I, I kind of hedged my bet somewhere in the middle. Part of me was going, ah, maybe you should grind to 18, 92 HP. But then part of me was thinking, all right, go play the player. I'm racing against Angel FM. There's a reason he's, last I checked, number one in the SRL rankings. So you have to, if you're playing a, a player of that caliber, you have to take some risks. And... I knew, all right, I don't like it, but I'm going to go in there with 92 and see what happens. I, I think there were three occasions where I swung on 46, uh, but it turns out I was about, what, five minutes behind? I, my timer yeah. went out somewhere in the, yeah, five minutes and 23 seconds behind. I'll take that. I mean, given, again, given the caliber of player that Angel is, I, to only finish five minutes behind, I thought that I would be playing well after the 930 race that's starting. Don't worry, I did the 17, uh, Charlock dive too. Yeah, I did one dive and a Star Wyvern slept and rep. I thought that there was a limit on the number of rounds that you could be slept, because I, I could have swore that that went seven rounds, and it just kept chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, and when I was down to a little bit, then it decided, all right, now I'm going to throw the DL2 breath at you just as an extra Stone Cold salute. Yeah, that was the green dragon that was one step away from the trap tile. Oh, 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 was it the green? Well, yeah, the green dragon did a little. Oh, that's right. They had the the DL2 breath also. Yeah, the yeah green I can't dragon remember. They they both weren't fun in Sherlock, but that's what it was. I was so close to the trap tile, had no idea what that was in store for that. I was lucky to get the sleep on and never saw what DL1 had. Uh, so I don't know if it had 200 something attack and could have knocked me for. Upward, upper 90s and even low 100s as we saw earlier this week, or whether it was a kitten, or something in between. We will never know. Everyone did the exact same thing. Hmm. And uh, honestly, I don't blame anybody. I don't care what the first base has. Go to sleep, stay away. And yeah, he had no resistance to stop spell. Apparently he had a 50% chance of heal and a 75% chance of fire breath. Huh. 
Yeah, didn't didn't see it, didn't Ooh. know about it. Ooh. No. Yeah, you saw that, right, Sneaky? Yeah, that had to have been a... Uh, he had to have known he had made a mistake the moment he clicked that button. No, it was the worst. Heal more minimum. Ooh. Yeah. Frighty's heading get, back out. Can we get Fs for Frighty's on that attempt, please? Man, that was just bad, bad spell RNG. That's all that was. He almost had that. He was in the clear. I thought he had that in the bag. I feel like what? I should be taking a peek at it here to see what y'all are talking about. Oh, and, yeah, uh, he's he's, he's going back now, but man, he he just had really really rough luck with his heal more minimum roll on the heal. And that was a pretty high rolling. Uh, yeah, I see Cyberdark noting in chat here. We'll bring up the DL2 stats once Fry Teeth gets it. All I know is it, it was at least 200 HP that, that DL2 had. But that's as much as I can get. I, I kind of lost count somewhere in the upper 170, 180 range as I was debating. Yeah. I, uh... <laughs> oh, thanks, Game Boy. Yes, currently 7 to. Okay, 229. Ooh, one off of max. Wow. I knew it was up there. I was like, all right, this. Uh... There, there's a lot of beef in that fight. Yeah. Even the hurt boy, you couldn't even land on it that easily. Oh, 17 in the league standing. Oh, I, for some reason I thought Game Boy was referencing the SRL standings, but because I know I'm somewhere around there as well, so that seems to make pretty good sense. But uh, that's okay. So in the league rankings, I'd be the first man out. That sounds better than I thought I was going to do with this. But there's still three weeks to to bottom out somewhere. Speaking of the next three weeks, what do you think about next week's flag set up with Cursed Princess? I think I better get to some practicing on it because I didn't really know I was going to... I didn't know I was going to really sign up for the league until about the day before sign-ups ended. I was very on the fence about it. I was like, ah. I, there are a lot of elements to this that I'm not a fan of. Um, I, you know, the game's made me very salty over the course of the last couple of months. I probably should step away, but then last minute I said, "All right, what? You know, what the bleep? I may as well just go with it and see what happens. And if I get too salty, then I'll take a lengthy hiatus at that point." So for now, yeah, I'm hanging in there. Okay, yeah, 19th in SRL, and uh, I just feel like that's. I don't know, I feel like both of those numbers are higher than my ability would would show, but I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's that's why they play the game, as uh, longtime broadcaster Chris Berman would say. Yeah, but of course, keep in mind, next week, in addition to the additional victory condition, it's open Charlock as well as short Charlock. So, even if you don't rescue the princess with the cursed belt and win that way, you could still grind and go and just go after the Dragon Lord. And do keep in mind, keys will be needed in the next seed for the first time in this tournament. So you're going to have to get to Rimuldar if you're going to want to be opening any doors. And no hurt more spell. Hmm. So there are a few twists to it here. So I'm going to have to definitely mess around over the course of the next week. Thank goodness that my new job doesn't start until March 2nd, so I can play around with a few of these uh, these new flags that, to which I'm not familiar. Because I don't believe I have played either of the Week 3 or Week 4, week four flag sets. There we go. Uh, in terms of Cursed Princess or Three's Company. So we shall see how that goes. But uh, at this point, I am just glad that we are out of chaos. In fact, let me pop a little bit of the bubbly here to celebrate. <laughs> Jericho, Jericho, or <laughs> Tyson right there. 
Yes, I'll celebrate with, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Hey, don't worry, Furon, I actually got a bottle of the Rockin' Rager champagne for you whenever... Oh, there you go. <laughs> wait, the, the actual, wait, did you go on the cruise? Uh, my roommate did, and she brought back the bottle. Oh, okay. I would imagine it's the same as what you could order on the Knocking Point website. Uh, Chris Jericho's actual... Oh, there is a bottle named a little bit of the bubbly based on his meme from, uh, uh, from gosh, about three months, four months ago now, something like that. Little little pro wrestling talk here, as that's a little bit of what I do as uh, as a radio personality. So it's kind of playing to my strengths, which is not Dragon Warrior randomizer. Well, you couldn't prove it by your uh, <laughs> stats and your standing at the moment. I mean, you're actually doing. I mean, as you said, you're running up against pros that have made names for themselves in previous tournaments, like Angel FM, and competing favorably with them. Don't sell yourself short, man. Selling myself short is probably one of my greatest uh, attributes. But no, I mean, it, you're right. The caliber of players, I mean, last week taking on, I mean, High Spirits, Amazing Toaster, they're both, I mean, they're both two of the top. Yeah, they're, they're both ranked above me. Angel's obviously ranked number one. Um, I'm sure, well, I mean, I was going to say, I mean, look at the positioning here to see kind of where I would be pending this last race here, but... Uh, uh, standing. That's what we want to go with here. So, yeah, presuming that it's uh, four versus four, etc. Format all the way down. All right, so I have Centroid, Will Wagner, and a rematch with Fry Teeth. So, or no, I'm sorry. I'm. That, yeah, you forgot that first row there, genius. Let's see. It says four, eight, twelve, sixteen. Oh boy. Yeah. All right. So if I'm seventeenth, then it would be yeah, a Centroid. What? Yeah, that'd be right. Centroid, Will, and Fry Teeth. Okay. Either way, it's uh, certainly challenging. But we'll see. I mean, High Spirits uh, still has his, so that'll shuffle things down, so I'll probably end up, you know, that'll knock a few people down a peg, because I'm pretty sure High Spirits isn't going to, you know, isn't going to get just the one point in it. You know, he's not going to finish fourth in a three-person race. So, yeah, those, those, those statistics are subject to change. And of course, after the next race that's going to be coming up here in the next 15 minutes on Randomania 2, uh, we'll after the race is over, we'll go a complete rundown of who's going to be facing off against who in next week's. Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting. And let's see here. Now that I'm able to look at the uh, the chat a little bit more here. Uh... Uh, let's see. Thankfully, uh, this is not the actual little bit of the bubbly that I popped here, but it's a nice 375 mil bottle, so it's uh, it's good for for one person. So yes, I could do that here. And I, I apologize. Oh, race... Correction, correction from the programmers. Uh, the next race is actually going to be right here on Randomania. So stick around after this commentary is over, and we'll uh, hand it on over to the next race promptly. Yeah, is so, it me? Yeah, don't. It, I was gonna say, it, forget, don't touch that dial. Don't click around with that mouse. Just stay right here on Randomania, as we have more league action coming your way. In fact, Sorry, it's just going your to thunder be a little bit there, sneaky. <laughs> Not a problem, by all means. But yeah, no, it, the, the next one is going to be the final race of week two, the last of the easy chaos seeds. We won't be seeing chaos again until the finals. By the way, sneaky, did you see those coordinates on screen for the death necklace? Oh, did, that's I what was in Cantlin. I don't think anyone actually found Cantlin. I know I didn't. I gambled and found coal, and, and that was uh, I, that was my big concern was, oh gosh, Eldritch Sword, that's why I doubled back, and that might have been something that cost me a few minutes, uh, maybe a minute or two, doubling back to the mountain cave to get to the bottom chest as I was killed before I'd say it. turned out it was just a gold chest, nope. but here we go again. Part of me was, oh, here we go, let's see here. He, uh, he did a little bit of grinding to get level 18. Now he's got a few more hit points to give him a little bit safer of a buffer here. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a, 
Yeah, it's above that that key number of 97, where even a max DL2 breath would only at max HP take you down, in this case, to 50. So it's you know it's not that potential of double heal more. So he should have this in the bag here pretty reliably. I mean, he's got 154 attack power. That's going to be, what, 27 to... 13 to 27. Yeah, so it's it's like, yeah. He's hitting almost as hard as the Dragon Lord is hitting him back, so I don't foresee this to be too big of a problem for him. A heavyweight slugfest, to say the least. Yeah, nobody really saw what the Dragon Lord one did because, well, everyone just put him to sleep and went, no, I, I do not consent to your move maneuvers. Uh, I had the I had, I had the call on that race the other night where I where the DL one hit for triple digits, as we see Fry Teeth uh, taking out the Dragon Lord rather handily at level eighteen. But, yeah, after seeing that, I was like, alright, I want no part of DL1's shenanigans in any way, shape, or form. We're gonna try sleep and see if it hits, and it turned out that the slept lock enough to not even be a concern. Alright, oh, and break out your GG's. Fry Teeth has defeated the Dragon Lord as well, rolling into third place and picking up his two points. Uh, fun fact, uh, we may have said it incorrectly earlier, but if you forfeit in a three-player race, you still get two points, not one. We're not going to punish you any worse than the seed already has. But he did go ahead and close out this race. And that that is fair. I think I was the initial fountain of misinformation regarding that. So uh, thankfully that was corrected by those in charge. And, well, that's what happens when I... You know, when Burgundy goes off the script and, uh, you know, puts his foot in his mouth instead. Well, at least it's not heel turn, to be exact. No, no, definitely not. Let me go back to my bubbly. No. <laughs> Let's see if we can't get Brian here real quick for a little bit of commentary, and then we're going to have to hurry and close it up so that our next runner is going to be there. And I believe he has just joined us. Hey, Fry Teeth, uh, thoughts on the seat? Uh, got off to a slow start when I when I saw where Breckenary was 15 minutes in. I knew I was probably in trouble. Yeah, that was... Uh... That was unfortunate that uh, you just, you kept getting steamrolled by those early enemies. It was really brutal. But you were actually the first one to find the harp. Okay. In interesting. Uh, so. Freud, uh, I have a question for you, Freud. Did you actually found Catlin before you went to Sherlock? I did. Well, good thing you didn't go for the coordinates because that led to the death necklace, actually. So you're pretty much in the driver's seat of fishing in the seat anyway. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Yeah, the uh, the, the coordinates just had the death necklace. And uh, considering your strength and your hit point totals probably would not have been a very useful item for you to find. No, I, d I did find that. I, I counted them out. Ah, okay. And uh, what about those Star Wyverns? Yeah, I think they got me a couple times. Yeah, the Star Wyverns were really the jerk police of this particular seed. And of course, you're rolling into next week where we are going to have Three's Company. Uh, thoughts on, on that particular flag set? Curse Princess. Or Curse Princess, excuse me. I apologize. No idea. I've never played it before. <laughs> well, 
Well, keep in mind that it's also open as well as short, Sherlock, and there's no hurt more, and you will need keys. So, that'll be interesting flag sets. Um, final thoughts before we hand this over to the next runners. Uh, no, just, uh, thanks for the restream, the commentary and tracking. Absolutely, and yeah, this would not have been possible without people like Mathgirl doing the restreams, uh, Centroid and Cyberdark on the tracking. I am Sneaky the Lost with me in the, the booth is Kaitan, and we'll see you next time. Good fight. Good night, everyone. <laughs>